the gap between Australia and the best in the world is widening. And our productivity growth today is also much worse than in the past. And we care about productivity because it has a direct impact on the prosperity and living standards of all Australians. This conference is all about navigating disruption and firms operated in an uncertain world full of disruption. And that future is looking more uncertain than ever. In this environment, businesses must be prepared if they want to thrive and survive. And that's where they need dynamic capabilities. These are more forward-looking and they're more strategic. In a world that is highly volatile and uncertain, dynamic capabilities are what will help businesses to maximise their chances of long-run survival and success. But for long-run success, it's not enough for firms to just focus on their core business. They also need to plan and position for the future. And our results in this research show that currently they're not doing enough of this. And if that continues, then Australia's innovation and productivity growth will continue to suffer. So putting all of this together, what we want leaders to know is that dynamic capabilities help businesses to perform better in uncertain environments. Firms with stronger dynamic capabilities are more profitable, more productive and more innovative. And ultimately that improves their chances of long run survival and success. Businesses must build their capabilities and almost all firms have room for improvement, especially in the area of transforming. Transforming is hard to do, but if firms don't do it, they risk getting left behind. And governments can help encourage businesses to develop their capabilities. And in fact, governments will need to be dynamic themselves as they look to deliver services while facing a lot of the same pressures as businesses. Firms need space, the people, time and money to build capabilities, to innovate and to position for the future. It's not enough to just focus on business as usual. And onerous regulatory burdens can make this more difficult. And firms looking for quick wins on their dynamic capabilities journey can look to improving the diversity of their leadership and also to being open to feedback on where their capabilities are currently at. Now, a principle of the circular economy is that there's no such thing as waste. There's only molecules in the wrong time, the wrong shape or the wrong phase. And that's what MCI Carbon is really doing with, um, with products like this. We're reimagining carbon dioxide from a harmful waste into a new building block um, for new, new inputs into our built environment and into modern manufacturing. So clean technologies have the challenge of develop, developing a technology, innovating a business model, navigating global capital and funding environments, creating customer markets of the future, work on community engagement for social license, and be an active part of creating the regu regulatory conditions for future business. At the end of the day, we need to make money, but we also need to deliver emissions reduction outcomes and carbon removal. And that's a task that can sometimes take longer than the existing funding model, model support, and that can lead to good companies failing in the canyon of death. Australia has so many natural endowments in renewables, bulk handling, resource processing and advanced manufacturing. We have the ability to create many unicorn companies in technology, infrastructure and advanced manufacturing. The question of how to innovate in times of uncertainty is an extremely important one for all Australian companies. In fact, it's existential. We can't imagine the true cost of failure and it's beyond the loss of productivity. There are also great riches and competitive advantages to be gained. It's just going to take pragmatism, integrity, and courage to get there. Thank you. And um, it can be said that the um, diversity on boards um, does lead to more dynamic capabilities, but it, it leads to better performance. That's, um, that, that, at the end of the day, it, um, uh, boards of companies with higher diversity have higher returns on investment. And last, um, last year, I think it was, um, Goldman Sachs actually announced that they wouldn't be um, floating any companies that don't have female board representation. Mm -hmm. And the reason was because they know that boards perform better with diversity and there's no way that a board would have done a proper global search for the right candidates and have come out with no female, um, with, with zero female board members. 
broader environment is driving digital platforms, uh, and we need to make sure that we are both providing uh, a service uh, that is meeting the future needs of customers, so making sure that our applications and our services and our information is digitally available, but we're really sensitive to the fact that we play a very unique role in the community. And, you know, our role is to be in region, regional and rural Australia, in the places where others have decided not to be, and also providing some of those traditional services, over-the-counter services for people who can't fill in a form, people whose English is not their first language, people who have difficulty through dyslexia or other disabilities and understanding what many of us just take for granted. Uh, and that's a fine line to operate as a business. And we know that the lens upon Australia Post is probably unique when it comes to the Australian business landscape. Uh, people expect us uh, to be there. They expect us to provide uh, the broad range of community services, even though those services are dwindling. At the same time, they expect us to keep investing and keep progressing and keep advancing the services we provide, particularly in our growing parcel business, given the e-commerce boom that the country has experienced. To be an entirely self-funded public enterprise, and we want to and can remain that way. But we have seen overseas what has happened when reform has not been done. Uh, we've seen uh, the Royal Mail uh, two weeks ago announce a $2 billion loss. Uh, we saw Canada Post announce a $500 million loss for the half year. Uh, and the daddy of them all is the United States Postal Service, which uh, announced an $8.5 billion loss uh, last financial year. Innovation is very much on our agenda. We are an innovative company. Uh, we've got one of the largest um, you know, uses of, of an app in the country. Our parcel app is 7.6 million active users. Uh, but it's something that we continue to look at. And it's not just innovation from a technology viewpoint, which is what people generally think about. It's technology, sorry, it's innovation from simple process improvement, uh, looking at small bits of, it, of, of, uh, of automation. Uh, we're a business of 1%. You know, the, the, the breakthrough technology uh, is probably not going to happen uh, in our industry. It is, a, it is generational changes and then finding those 1% every day to improve the process and deliver that uh, better service and, and, and in a more efficient way.